Income. In Excel, the Choose Calls function is a handy function for extracting specific columns from a larger table. It's convenient as there is no copying and pasting of content, no linking of individual cells or lookups, and no more hiding and unhiding columns based on user preferences. So let's see Choose Calls in action. Hi, I'm Pauline and I provide practical data skills for real-world analysis. Here's the scenario. In Excel, I have this spreadsheet which contains 26 columns and 450 rows of data. Some users require to see all rows and all columns. However, a second group only require the information contained within seven of these columns. I'll use the Excel Choose Columns function and in a separate tab, I will show the columns required. I'll provide an example where the data is contained within a table and also where the data is raw on the page. The formula for Choose Calls works like this. I say equals Choose Calls and then I tell the formula where to find the data then I list the columns required. The columns to be extracted are columns A, D, E, F, G, X and Y. A point to note for this first example is that the data is in a table called Prop Info and the table has a header row, then the data. To select the relevant columns to be extracted, I don't use the column letter, instead I use the column position. So column A is position 1, column B position 2, right the way up to column Z, which is in position 26. If it makes it easier to find the column numbers, then somewhere in your spreadsheet you can just input equals transpose, then grab your column headers row and a list of the headers appears. Then you can add in your count by the first row's number one. The next row is then equals the row above plus one. Then you can copy the formula down the column. Just a little tip, but of course there are other ways of creating a list of column headers. I'll put the data on a new tab to make it easier to see, but you can place your columns wherever is convenient for you. I would like the data to start in cell A1. So here I put equals, choose calls. Then I put where my data is, which is in the prop info table. As I want to bring in both the headers and the data, I require to input in square brackets hashtag all. Then close the square bracket and put a comma. If I omit the all, then the data comes in without the column headers. Now all I need to do is list out my columns which are columns one, column four, column five, column six, column seven, column 24, and column 25. Then I close my bracket, and when I select return, the chosen columns appear. When I bring in the columns, I can also change the order in which the columns come in. For example, in Choose Columns, if I wanted the current emissions to be next to the other two columns which reference the current figures, then all I would need to do is move this column, which is column 24, into a different order in our sequence. So in our Choose Columns formula, I want to have 1, 4, 5, then 24, comma, 6, 7, 25. And as you can see, all the columns with the word current are together and the columns with the word potential are now together. 
Another point to note is that our figures in our choose calls are all positive numbers for the column references. However, you can use negative figures here. And that would be the scenario if when counting columns in your info table, you went to the last column and started to count backwards towards the first column, which would make column Z minus one, Y minus two and X minus three. So if I go back to my original formula and change 24 to minus three and 25 to minus two, you can see that the relevant columns are still being pulled into our new tab. This second example relates to when the data is not in table format. Again, I will demonstrate choose calls on a new sheet for ease. So I put in equals choose calls. Then I need to say where to find the data. So it's going to be in the all info tab and my data goes cell Z 450 all the way back to the start. Then I put a comma and I select my columns exactly the same as before. So I want columns one, four, five, six, seven, 24 and 25. Close my bracket and the columns appear through with the relevant headers attached. However, please note that in this example, I have hard coded in the end point of the data. Therefore, if new rows of data were added to the all info tab, those rows of data would not appear in this extracted columns page. So here you could consider using other options to select the range of data, such as using index and count A to cope with the additional rows of data, assuming that column A will always contain a value for each row. But there are, of course, other options you could consider. You can do more with choose calls than I've discussed in this video, such as add dynamic values to the column selection part of the formula and you can use filter or sort with choose calls. But I hope this video has provided an introduction to the choose calls function. Please click the thumbs up if you found this video helpful. Check out my other resources in the video description below and click that subscribe button for more data hints and tips tutorials. Thanks for watching.